he talks a lot. I don't talk a, a lot. And then I think at least he's nicer than me. There are few places that contain more contrast and contradictions than South Africa's townships. Today on The Fashion Concept, we're joined by Mawande Mahuli and Kolani Magadla, founders of XM Creations who hails from Old Crossroads, Cape Town. The dynamic duo takes us on an epic journey of how they emerged from a small shack as their studio to showcasing at SA's biggest fashion shows. Uh, hello, I'm Mawande. And I'm Kola Nimakadla. And together we are XM Creations. We are the co-founders and creative directors of XM Creations. The brand started in 2013 because I approached them in 2012, right? Yeah. Because I wanted to do fashion design, but I wasn't qualifying because of my marks. They were so bad. But I, I knew that I was creative uh, yeah. because I was very much alert in terms of the fashion weeks and everything because I used to take magazines and check out magazines in terms of who are the it designers at that time. And I believe back in the day, we had the likes of JJ Schoolman, we had David, your David Tlales and your Tula Cindy's. Yeah, so that's when we decided to start a brand, but we, 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 we didn't know how to make a lot of stuff. So we decided to actually teach ourselves first and then start by making school track suits. Yeah, yeah. So we'd approach schools to create and design track suits, especially in the townships, because most of the schools were struggling in terms of that. Because after we did our research, we realized that most of, of the schools in our area didn't have track suits and uniforms. So that was our platform to actually start there so that we practice how to make things and everything so that when we start approaching the fashion side of things would actually be perfect in terms of our technique, in terms of sewing and everything and pattern, and pattern making. Yeah. 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 Fast forward, we started attending fashion weeks. Yeah, I still yeah. remember. The first fashion week we attended was the SA Men's Wear. Mm, in Waterfront. Yes, it was in Waterfront back in the day, yes. We meant, uh, I think in Dan Shala nearby him, I have a Oki uh, nearby him, and then we met there on that time. We just see each other like, hey, 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 hey. That and then cool. I move. You know, when you have a shack, you move yeah, all the time it. because yes. the rent, it's keep on going up and then you can't afford it. I still remember on that time, I was just doing the repairs, mm -hmm. only the repairs because I didn't know how to do anything. That's the only thing that I do. The repairs. And it was 2012, right? Yeah. As Banjo Mbebe Selechilo, he asked me about where did I went to school and everything. Mm -hmm. And then I told him I went in school in Kailicha yeah. uh, for six weeks. Yeah. Uh, so, you just learned there to basic. the basic how to use the machine That's only. Mm -hmm. And then I still remember on that school, they give us the patterns which is I wasn't familiar with the you're pattern. clueless because you're given patterns that are already done and you're like, Clue, what am I supposed to do here? When we met, I said, okay, as much as you're saying this is confusing, let's find a way, the easiest way. Let's go to these thrift shops, get a jacket, get a shirt, and also get, a, get pants. Mm -hmm. Let's just tear them apart and put it together again, tear it apart and see how these things works. And then it helped a bit because Ever since we did that, we've managed, but oh, this is the lag part. This is supposed to go there and there and, there. and then we're like, okay, now we need to get clients. And then we're like, okay, let's start a brand first and then name it X Polani M Mawande. So it's X M Creations. Let's see what, what's going to happen. As soon as we started, we started posting on, 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 Facebook. on Facebook, every time we make something for ourselves, we post on Facebook. People who actually want to buy that, did this stuff like, oh, okay, this is happening. People usually ask us about why is our brand so bright? Why do we use bright colors? I think it happens subconsciously because we never actually plan it. We say like, okay, this time around we're gonna use every every collection. I think it's because of you grew up in the Eastern Cape. There's a yeah. lot of color in terms of when we have the traditional ceremonies. The fact that you grew up in the Eastern Cape and I grew up in Cape Town, we do have traditional ceremonies that we, we do in Cape Town and you yeah. guys do as well in the Eastern Cape. But and it's they're, not the same. they're not the same, but mm. they're similar. That works because most of the time, once he comes up with a concept, then I also look at the concept and I'm like, okay, this is my perspective of, of, of what we should do. And then he comes up, then we infuse it together and then it works. Sometimes we fight so bad. We're like, are we going to use this concept? Okay, let's sleep on it. Wake up tomorrow and then just explain the concept to me and let's see how is it going to help the brand? Because we feel like each and every time you get a, 
Elan was a chance to create. Mm. You should create something that is going to actually elevate your brand. Because mm. that's the growth we wanted as a, as a brand, not, not to be seen in the same level. If we showcase a certain collection this year, when you look at the next collection we showcase, you should be able to say, ah, elevated, it's, what, mm, it's different mm. from what it was, but at the same time, the standard is a bit high, jalun jalun and so forth. So that's how we, we managed to work together. And the fact that he talks a lot, I don't talk a, a lot. And then I think at least he's nicer than me. So when we started, the problem was getting capital to start. So that's why we actually decided to go to your cousin sister. Mm. We borrowed 450 rand from her, right, mm. to make samples so that we, may, we were able to create samples for the schools that we were going to approach. But it wasn't easy from there because also we were not really educated in terms, in terms of how to use the money when it gets to us because we had so many problems. Sometimes we'd actually get the profit and then use it to actually uh, pay for a certain um, debt we had and then we are left with nothing. When we started actually making good money and we actually changed um, our lifestyle a bit, we started going out and, and so forth. And we had this thing of posting on WhatsApp and, and Facebook every time we make an outfit, but we made this for so and so and so and so and so and so. And then we have this thing in the townships. As soon as you buy 1,000 rand sneakers, you have money. So we got robbed at gunpoint. Mm. So they came into our house and they were like, we saw you guys at, the, at an ATM at the mall. And then we know that you guys have money. They took everything we had, our phones and everything, but we have to get new phones because that phones are very important when you are a fashion designer mm. because they have to actually, if they can't get hold of you on the phone, they will think that you're running away with your money. So we had to go borrow money and, and so forth. And we're like, as, as if we don't have more struggles than anyone else working from their hood, now we have to actually start over again. But we're like, okay, this is not gonna stop us. Let's just look at the bright side. When it comes to designing, the biggest struggle was a few silhouettes that we couldn't actually make because sometimes a client will come and be like, I want this thing. And then you will say, no, it's fine, I'll make it. And then when you start making it, you're like, oh my God, okay, this is very hard. What are we going to do? Are we gonna communicate with the client that we need more time? Or are we gonna give them their money back? And then you're like, okay, let's just give, us, give, give ourselves time. Um, for an example, we didn't know that you have to make a mock up first before mm. you actually finish a garment. Make a mock up and see if, if it works. Then we're like, okay, let's take this garment as, as if we were making a mock up and then fix everything we need to make and then start over. And then, lucky enough, most of our clients were like, we understand you guys are self taught designers, but next time don't make the same mistake. And then we, we just, okay, thank you. We'll use that opportunity to actually correct our mistakes. And then we did that. And it worked. And working uh, at Ekasi, uh, any challenges that we have, because our clients, I, I, I think it's not easy for them to get Ekasi because it's dangerous. And then the solution that we have, we only come, let's say, let's say on Mondays. It depends when, and then we can take the measurements and everything to try to avoid a client to not go there in, in the hood. But I think others, they do understand because we have a, a, a plaza, a which yeah. just said we're going to see, the mall. go to the mall and then we'll pick you there. And then also because there's a, sometimes there's a lot of fittings that, that have to be done. done. We can't just like take the measurement here in town and then sit at the comment and then you take the comment. You have to make sure you fit, more especially if you do something like with e pop tube, so you have to make sure that everything uh, fits very well. And just to, to add more to what you're saying, we we've lost a lot of um, clients because of being in crossroads. A person will text us on Instagram, "Hi, I want you guys to make this for me," and so on, so on, so on. And then we'll be like, "Okay, we are based in crossroads." They're like, they're "What? Like, no." I think um, if if it could happen, let's say would sing a Sebenzeli in the hood that could be great for us because we already do have a little bit of e exposure. And if Singafumana some e fans is Tile, because Singachusikwa Zuba, let's say, Sirend, a place in town, let's say in town, Wongumdo Ozo Kwazba, Akwazba, would be easy to come because it's easy for for Umdo Osuka on the hood to town, but it's not easy for Umdo Osuka to the town side to yes. the hood. So if we can get e, e funds till yeah. 
for an example, people, a lot of people ask us, but have you guys been funded before? We're like, no, we, mm -hmm. we are where we are because of everything we've done with our hands. We make sure that we, if, if we need a certain amount of money, we'll create maybe five jackets, sell them and make sure that that money is going to go help us there. And so that means a lot of sleepless nights for us, but at the same time, it helps. But as you, as you just said, funding would actually be really great. I mean, we would do a lot of things and be able, if, 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 we, if we've managed to be where we are, just by, by on us. our own, mm. that means that if we could get funding, we'd be actually be in a better space. And sometimes there are CS Benalawar because we are guys. Maybe it, if I was a woman and then he is a guy, at least maybe there will be yeah. something. We are all ma males, yeah. so sometimes like we have that thing. And most of the time we look at it, look at it this way. Maybe the funders or people who actually uh, deal with the funds are like, okay, let's give this money to a person who actually needs it most. And maybe they look at us and be like, uh, maybe they, they're still young. They will actually find a way to actually do this. And then we're like, okay, no problem. Let's just sit down and find ways to actually create. Because I believe where there's a will, there's a way. It doesn't mm. really matter what circumstances you're under or kind of what um, is thrown at you. Yeah? Because mm. I feel like if maybe we, we got the funding when we were starting, maybe we wouldn't be here right now. Um, our highlight is a brand. I think our features mostly um, by magazines. We've been featured on Drum Magazine, You Magazine, Glamour Magazine, and also the one that made us very much more excited was when we were featured on Vogue Portugal. Yeah. Uh, it was an editorial. So we we're really happy for that because we felt like, what? International. So it made, it made us so happy. Celebrity. So, yeah. I will just said, mm -hmm. Bonang, I love the fact, Yoba, um, you don't see her only dressing like a, a one designer. She goes like to the lot of e e e yeah. designers. So I think we do have a gap to dress yeah, nah. yeah. So for me, it's, it's a Urikirik because I feel like he has an understanding of fashion that most of our celebrities don't really have. He's very stylish and he's very daring in terms of what he wears, be it in a music video or editorials or, and everything. Yeah. In 10 years time, um, obviously not working on the hood. Yeah. That's the first. Mm -hmm. And then the second one, uh, not showcasing in Cape Town only. Also, also. Now, in the provinces, and then, let's say, globally. Mm -hmm. That could be awesome for us. And also, would love to tap into showcasing at the AFI. More or less, like in five years' time, or three years' time, AFI. would or love two. to be the big... Yeah, or, or two, one. Or one. We don't know. Mm -hmm. So we'd love to be part of the AFI, and also showcasing other global fashion weeks, and also take our work abroad and also would love to be part of one of the biggest fashion shows in, in, in Africa. I think there's, we also have, e, what's the name of this fashion show? Lacos Fashion Week. Yeah. One of the best, would love to be there as well. Uh, one word uh, to describe XM? Um, I think we are very colorful. And also it goes back to what we, the explanation for our first ever collection we showcased. It was, it was, it was freedom because of we, we were inspired by the colors of our flag. For mm -hmm. we are a rainbow nation, so colorful, I think, is the right word. Yeah, yeah. we'll go with color because it doesn't really go with the color of the clothes only. Africa is colorful in so many ways. Yeah, yeah. My inspiration was to grow up, take all the, ex the experiences and the people that we live with in Cape Town and then put it together Afrocentric. I think, surely, you won't ask me that question because you answer everything. Um. <laughs> <laughs>